Hello everybody, welcome back, and with today we're going to talk about more advanced CSS selectors. As I mentioned before, there are a ton of these, and don't ever try to just memorize all of them, but as you use them, you'll get to know them, and you'll get to memorize them just because you're using them, so we're going to talk about a few of the more advanced ones. So we've already talked about element, class, and ID, so let's just use those real quick. I have this little web, web page, it's got an H1 with some ULs, it's got a couple H3s, it's got some um, links inside of a UL, and it's also got a link by itself. So let's go ahead and use some of these. Let's select all of the H1s, and give them a color of blue. I refresh, and now my H1 is blue. We already knew that. Let's look at the class. So over here in my HTML, let's give a class to this UL. Class equals um, cool ul. So over here, dot cool ul, and we're going to give it a color. Oops, let's change the text to red. Refresh, and there it goes. And then also, id we've already got. Oops, so my id color. Green. Over here, let's apply the my ID to one of these items, and now you can see that guitar is green. So those are the ones we already knew about. Let's talk about some more. Asterisk. The asterisk is just like in most programming languages, means everything. So order. 2 or 1 px solid red. What this will do is this will apply a border to every element on the page, every single thing. Boom. So now we've got all of these things have borders around them. This can come in pretty handy when you're trying to troubleshoot your CSS. It's a nice way to quickly throw borders on everything so you can see spacing and all that stuff. Um, but we obviously don't want that in the long run. You'll almost never use this other than that. But um, that's an option, so I'm going to go ahead and comment that out and refresh the page. Now you have Descendants. What a Descendant does is it selects everything that is inside another item. For example, it might select all p tags inside of a div. So let's do this all, let's get all anchor tags that are inside of a list item. So to do that, we do li space a. So it does all anchor tags inside of li. And then let's do something to that. Um, let's maybe give it a, ba a background of orange. And refresh. And it selects all anchor tags that are within LIs. So if I look over here, these are anchor tags inside of LIs. They're descendants of LIs. It did not pick these other ones because these are LIs, but they don't have anchor tags in them. It didn't pick this one because it's an anchor tag, but it's not a descendant of an LI. So this is a cool way that you can um, select more spe specific things. You also have the adjacent selector. I'm going to comment this out. In fact, let's comment all this out. You have the adjacent selector. What adjacent selector does is it selects all elements that come after another element that's a sibling of it. So if it's on the same level. For example, let's do let's do all H3s. I'm sorry, let's do all ULs that are adjacent to H3. So H3 plus UL, that's what this is what it does. If it's this and and this is next to it. So H3 plus UL, let's give them a um, border sock two pixel dotted green. And then refresh. Hmm didn't seem to do anything. 72 hours later. So I just sat there and troubleshot for a little while and couldn't figure out why in the world this wasn't working and then here's my problem because when I was doing the commenting out I left an extra thing so basically it compiled it got down to there and said oh crap there's something wrong and just stopped working. So as I delete that let me save and refresh over here and there we go all ULs that are immediately after an H3 are now red. But this one is not after an H3, it's after an H1, so it's not affected. But all of these are, 
And all of these are, you just can't tell the text because it has a, um, because those are links, so that overrides it. But you can see these bullets over here are red. So you can tell that this one is also affected. Let's comment that out, save. Then we have nth of type. What nth of type does is you give it a number and it selects the nth of that type. Um, this is kind of a, it's really difficult to explain with words, so I'll just show it to you. This is useful for things like selecting the second list or selecting the second item on a list. So if I do li nth, oops, nth of type, and then let's say the second one, then I can make the background black. And refresh, and there you go. The second item, the second li in each ul is now black. And one thing to note, this is not every other one. This is not every second one. This is just the second one. So if I duplicate this a few more times and refresh, it doesn't do it every other one. It's the second one. So just keep that in mind. If I did nth of type 3 and set the background to green, it would be every third one. So you'll notice here I have ULs. So let's grab UL, nth of type 3, refresh, and it picks the third UL. So the first one is there, second one is there, third one is there. And the way this works is basically it checks each level and looks at the items inside of it. So the reason it picked the third UL here is because the third UL is the third inside the body. The reason it picked the third LI in each one of these is because it's the third inside of that UL, of each UL. So it scans through each item looking for children, if that makes any sense. This is one you really need to kind of play around with to fully understand. And then finally, there's the attribute selector. This one is super handy if you're wanting to um, select parts of the web page based on their attributes. Like if, it, if you're wanting to select only the password inputs, like you don't want to pick all the inputs, you don't want to pick the text inputs, you don't want the radio button inputs, you just want the password inputs, then you can select that. To do this, you would um, if you use square bra brackets. So let's do this for these links. So I'll save this and refresh so we're back to, the, to nothing. Let's say we only wanted the coker links, but we wanted both coker links. So we can do ahref equals https colon slash slash www.coker.edu. Oops, edu. And then add in whatever we want it to be. Color, or let's do background. Background is green. Fresh the page. And now the links that go to Coker are green, but the links that go elsewhere are not. So that's what that bracket does. Whenever you're selecting it, you select all items of that type with this attribute. So all A tags was the href attribute that equals this. This is, like I said, useful if you want to select all input where the type equals password. That's a very common way to use this. Or type equals radio or something like that where that way you can select only those types because you can't just select all inputs and that's pretty much it for the more advanced css selectors these are the kind of things you have to kind of play around with so i highly suggest you set up your own little playground right here and play around with these more advanced css selectors so what we did is we talked about how you, we reviewed selecting elements, classes, and IDs. Then we talked about the asterisk, which is everything, descendant, which means direct descendant. So it's item, space, another element. Adjacent is element plus element. Nth of type, that's the one you really need to play around with. You put the element, colon, and then nth of type. And then we talked about the attribute. This one is super useful. The element and then square brackets with the attribute and the value of the attribute inside. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.